Welcome to Digital Marketing Europe. I'm Katie Stoddard, the host for today. I'm a speaker and a coach. It's my honor to be hosting today the Search World Track. We just had a fantastic talk with Alexander Roskiel all around Google campaigns. It was really in depth. If you haven't seen it yet, check it out afterwards in the replay. And now we're going to dive into something slightly different. We're going to look at tech stack. And as you know, our word world is constantly in fluctuation, constantly changing. And this new technology presents both opportunities, but also quite a lot of challenges. So how can advertisers, for example, know which technology to use? Why choose one over the other? This is where our next speaker comes in. He is a works at digital uh, as a digital strategy director at Media Sense. And over the course of his career, he's held many strategic roles. And recently, he's been focusing on creating transformation. That's great, because I love transformation as a transformational coach. <laughs> creating transformation for companies through defining the right business model and implementing new tech processes and culture. So please show a warm welcome right in the chat if you're looking forward to this talk. Warm welcome to Leonardo Oliveira. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much for it. Uh, the stage is all yours. Looking forward to your talk. I'll be taking lots of notes and I'll see you for the Q&A. So, all right. Let me just go back to the first one. So thank you very much for the introduction. I think, the, like you said, this is a um, slightly different topic from um, most of what I've seen. Great presentations today. The, um, the one on search, uh, and this, 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 this is where it sits. But that tech, I see it as a broader than one specific channel we'll talk about for search, for programmatic, for social, for planning, for measurement, for everything else. So hopefully it will resonate with the, with the, with the audience. First, a bit about media sense. We are global media advisors, as you see, uh, working with some of the, the biggest brands worldwide. Uh, what we do can be separate, split in three different areas. One is the operating models, like you said, transformation is about uh, helping organizations define how they should operate, what is the right operating model for them to take the most of their media, their media activities. Partners is when we help um, them uh, choosing the right partners, meaning agencies, but not only restricted to agencies, here we talk about the tech stack as well, what are the right partners and how many partners and, and where uh, to help them achieve their goals and the analytic par analytics part. Analytics is about auditing, is about analyzing, is about reviewing performance, is about uh, uh, ensuring that what they're delivering is in line with the expectations. So. So this is media sense. We have a lot of content on our website. We, as you see, we have a lot of good and big clients and we are growing. We are growing massively. Now we have one, more than one of the people, which is quite remarkable for media, uh, for a media auditing, company, media auditing company. And we are present across multiple markets as well. So this is probably uh, a relevant slide if you want to know more about media sense. Uh, go to our website, please. So on this topic, what is AdTech? I think probably we should start here. AdTech is anything that can help you on uh, achieving more with the digital in terms of buying, managing, optimizing, taking the most from your media spend, digital media spend. And why you should uh, choose it carefully? Because there are many variables and it can really define what is wrong or can it, it can really go wrong in terms of performance, in terms of what you achieve. And if you choose the right tech, if you choose the right platforms, um, you really have um, support that can really enable you to, to, to go further. But talk about that tech, and if you are um, aware and if you keep reading the newspapers and the uh, the magazines, the digital magazines, like I hear, like I read, and like I hear about, there are loads of bad things going on, like lots of lots of bad news, a lot of layoffs, layoffs on Google tech, uh, tech companies like Amazon, Microsoft, uh, Spotify. You hear a lot of these, uh, and obviously this is a reflection of what is going on from an economic standpoint, right? 
But on the other hand, there are also good news because, uh, as we know, um, when there is when there are when the circumstances are not as great, there is always someone that finds an opportunity. There is always an opportunity to transform, to disrupt, to come up with a solution. And that's where new tech, new solutions come into play. Now, one thing that um, people talk about a lot is ad tech and martech, and what is really the difference between them? Obviously, what we see here is that actually martech is a search term that uh, has more interest and is like look it into the last year and a half, but even if we look into the last five, six years, Martech was already there. Artec is always there as well, always been there, but not with the same interest as Martech. And that's because Martech is actually broader. Artec is more about technology, like we said, for digital advertising and came uh, um, later. If we think about the early days of Google or the early days of Meta, in this particular case, Facebook, the platforms weren't even monetized. It was just pure organic. So there was no need for ad tech solutions. Only when it came, when it became monetized, it's when the, the tech solutions came into place. So talk about solutions and about um, what the ad tech is and what martech is. One thing I should say is there are multiple tools that constitute the ad tech and multiple tools that are part of the martech. Let's put it in this way. The ad tech is everything that is with the digital media buying in terms of ad server, DSP, bid management tools, uh, anything that goes within that area. Um, whilst the martech is everything that is on the email marketing, organic social, content, email, um, website related, app, everything that is not to generate money and it doesn't require any part of media buying. So it's basically content being optimized. And the, the intention, and most of the times the intention is really to unify the two of them. And that's where to break this, those silos. Let's just move to the next slide. So in the same happens on the on the um, on the ad tech. If this slide should have a, a, a change because it, sh it should start first with the martech and then come up with the search. The, the the reality is that martech and the search serve completely different industries, works across different specialisms, and um, uh, you have multiple and big. Um, players like the Google, Amazon, Meta, Microsoft, Alibaba, if we talk about different um, verticals, uh, and you have multiple changes, disruptions. So you saw what Apple happened with Apple, you saw what is happening with Google, with Meta, the disruption on the way you track, the way you optimize, the way you manage campaigns, the, the way you op and, and the way you read in terms of uh, understanding the outcomes, so reporting, measurement. And the reality is, once well, some solutions will become obsolete, some tools will become obsolete, but some tools will come up. Here is just an example. You can see in this particular slide uh, from Lumascape, um, you have tools that are the search engines that most of the people think mostly about Google and Bing, but there are multiple other platforms that also are search networks, search engines. And then uh, you the same applies for SEO, for uh, analytics, for uh, um, um, optimization management of campaigns. So if you want to manage a campaign on Google and on Bing or Microsoft or Yahoo, you can, is, can use tools like Social 360, but you can also use Marine or Sky or Ignition One or any other, many other tools. So there are multiple ways to do so. Um, and some are more efficient, some are uh, less efficient, some are more expensive, some are more customizable. You need to make that decision and that's where we need to get into. So why is the technology, the tech stack uh, so important? Because one, 
it drives automation. You can set up campaigns to go live tomorrow. You can set up ads to be changed tomorrow. You can uh, uh, set up keywords to go live or in the same applies to landing pages, keywords, everything, all those aspects. And it saves time and resources, right? Because there are loads of changes in terms of changing bids, in terms of changing creatives, in terms of changing ad copy that back in the day you used to do it on a really manual basis. And obviously uh, there are errors, there are mistakes, and you can prevent them with these kind of tools that you avoid uh, by bringing the automation. You also are able to achieve better performance because if you have... Uh, you can, you can have specific goals and the tool can optimize against those goals. It's an, uh, they have algorithms that uh, work on top of those engines, whether it is a DSP or a search tool or, or, or a search engine or um, a social platform, you have algorithms that can operate, can support you achieving your objectives in those platforms. And then obviously reaching to different customers, new audience and actually bringing, delivering the scale that you are looking for. You, so you don't, are, you're not always targeting the same, the same customers. At the end of the day, it is supposed, supposed also to, to deliver some automation and uh, on the reporting side. So meaning you will be able to have more insights on what works, what didn't work in terms of creative, in terms of copy, in terms of inventory, publishers, platforms, audience, all those aspects. Here I put some quotes from um, some relevant people in terms of uh, their roles in big organizations. If you if you can have a look into the uh, these sources, you will see that these are CEOs or CMOs or CDOs, and they explain why technology is helping them uh, grow in their business in different ways. Obviously, they need the resources, they need the expertise, but they need the technology on top of it to, to support that growth. And they obviously, all together is what will drive that growth. In the same, in the same way, one interesting aspect um, is about this question that was asked in the same document, and uh, I thought it would be relevant to bring here. Within your or typical client's company, what best describes the capabilities? Um, and most believe that they don't have the tools and don't fully utilize them. One thing I often see with the advertisers is this is exactly this. They might have the tools, but they don't know how to use it, or they are not using them to the full extent that they can use, not taking the most of the tools, even if they are paying, and some tools can be very expensive. Um, but in many other cases, they don't have the solutions and they don't know how to use them. So obviously, if you have partners, if you have agencies, if you have consultants that can support and guide you on what can help you driving that transformation, because that's what we are talking about. The transformation can help you decide technology on, on what technology to bring to take you to the next level. And... Um, all this is this is what this uh, this is what this is about, and the CMOs, the leaders uh, across more, many organizations, already acknowledge that. So here is two different uh, articles: one from Gartner, one from the CMO 2022 report, and they both acknowledge the need to empower the marketing teams in two ways: obviously, technology and data. But what these stats showcase is a shift where back in the day, uh, three, four years ago, we were talking a lot about speed in activation, agility, flexibility. Now, I think we have passed that. We have overcome that. Now we are talking about having the data and having the technology to enable that data, uh, to have that insight on the customers, on what they need, on what audience to reach and where. And that's where technology can come into play and can be very, very relevant. So tech is always evolving. We've been talking about technology, but what, techno what, what are we referring to? So the way 
we talk about technology and the technology we talk about is different now than what it was five years ago and then what it was 10 years ago. And there was already technology to help advertisers within digital video buying. In the past few years, and you see here some, you see a, a timeline, the cookies, the death of third party cookies is helping um, transforming uh, that tech space because a lot of solutions are trying to overcome the challenge that comes with it. It's not something recent because Internet Explorer, uh, Firefox, they did it before. Google is the one that is delaying it, but uh, 45 to 50% of the cookies were already gone. You see the increased number of the wall gardens. Obviously, you were talking about the Amazons, but talking about the Google, but we have also now the retail, retail media networks the same way. And by wall gardens, is, we mean closed ecosystems where the data being shared from those platforms to the outside ecosystem is pretty much non-existing. You just see the basics. The measurement, because of what we have just said, but even beyond that, measurement is a, um, a challenge that all advertisers and that the industry is trying to tackle for many years. Trying to understand the correlations between traditional media and digital media, but also between the different touch points. We have all heard about attribution, we have heard about econometrics, media mix modeling. We have moved beyond the last click to um, <laughs> first click to, to align. So, so there are multiple multiple ways to, to address the measurement and it's something that is not being, is not a, a problem solved, let's put in this way. The creative, I think this is very linked to the increased number of formats and platforms. Uh, and even within the same old plat platforms like the Google, the Meta, the Amazon, the, the Microsoft uh, and so on, you see more formats, more creative formats. You see the videos coming up or uh, more often you see different types of banners, different types of creatives. And this, this means that, that there is a need for advertisers to be able to create uh, different adverts, different formats in a really fast, agile way, but be able to measure extra as well what is the output uh, when they put them into place in, in the campaigns. And related is the reemergence of the old formats. Contextual is something that we used to do a lot 10 years ago uh, within Google Display Network, for instance, uh, but also the new formats like connected TV and retail media. And these are just examples. We can go to the metaverse and Roblox and all those things that are coming into play as well. So the new formats is more fragmented, new, new, new platform than new media. And now we take the most of it. And that's where tech also can help. And lastly, but uh, not the least, I think is the data. Data is now, it's been mentioned as the new currency, I think. It's not just that, because data is, uh, there are so many variables and so many things that need, need to account when we talk about data, is about the privacy, is about the regulation, is about how we hold, uh, host and activate that data in the most efficient way for advertising purposes, but also to know more about our customers and serve them in the best possible way. So, one thing I wanted to talk about as well, I can just take a note and take a slight brief, is um, on the ecosystem. So we talk about the tech, but the tech, what it, what it does is following the evolution of the marketing and media. So if you think about nowadays, we have a lot more devices than five years ago. We have more platforms. We have the Web3. We have streaming. We have a, a regulation. So we have a lot of trends, a lot of things that are happening now that didn't exist in the same to the same extent five years ago. We have also um, a shift in the uh, in the consumer behavior and the way we act. The generations are different and uh, they are more dispersed. So they don't act all in the same way. So now there are more niches and people have different interests and they are okay with it. Now we don't follow everyone else. 
And obviously there are trends because of multiple reasons. We are all aware the council culture, culture, the sustainability, diversion, inclusion, and the need for privacy. Customers, the consumers they demand more privacy. They demand for that their data is protected. Uh, and that leads to a change, to a shift in the in the way we uh, do marketing and the way we go after uh, new customers so and the way we run media and that consequently or subsequently uh, has an impact on the technology so technology needs to evolve according to this and that drives some also some tensions one is how we adapt that the other one is um how we drive the scale, because if we want to scale um, with all these aspects, how we go after different audiences across different ecosystems, different platforms, how we manage all that. Do we need more resources? Do we need more expertise? Do we need more tools? Do we need to be in more places? Because people are across everywhere. Now it's not just in one ecosystem and you can find everyone. You go to multiple ecosystems. And as implications, you. you it's a challenge for multiple brands, for many brands to maintain that brand equity and reputation. It's also difficult to keep uh, the systems and the process very well integrated. And these disciplines, if you think about digital channels, but also traditional media, and if you think about PR and if you think about content, so, and about apps, web, um, all these aspects need to be well integrated and it's very, very difficult when uh, there is so much fragmentation. And also means that you need to have different capabilities. The expertise that uh, uh, advertisers need to have on their side, whether with this, uh, it is just themselves or with partners, needs to be much broader and much more in-depth. And they need to continuous test, test and learn, validate, the learnings because otherwise um, it's very difficult to understand what works, what doesn't work for them. Um, like I said, as a result of the, 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 what we were just saying, the technical skills is all, uh, are also very different. What we need nowadays, what companies, advertisers need nowadays are very different from what were 10 years ago. So. Back in the day, you wanted someone that was a search expert. You wanted someone that was a social expert, a programmatic expert, analytics expert. And th those people were problem solvers. And they are still problem solvers. But when we refer to technology, we need to have the broader picture. We need to see it in a different way. We need to be able to understand what the different digital channels are able to, to deliver, uh, understand the impact of the different touch points, and how you can test and learn, but also how you can maximize the overall outcome by pushing more in one certain channel or um, reducing it in another uh, and learning from that. And that this is another quote from, uh, I think it was a CMO that uh, responded to the Media Sense 2025 survey. I also recommend you to look at it, uh, where we talk to, to many uh, senior uh, leaders in the, in the marketing media world. And one thing that they mentioned is the importance of being able to understand not just the performance, but the brand aspect, and the, uh, being able to have those in-depth conversations about one or two or three or four specific uh, channels, but also uh, um, how you can maximize uh, the return on investments based on what they can deliver. If there is a specific objective with one campaign, what is the best channel to drive that? So going back to the initial slide, uh, tech stack um, and ad tech, who should be involved in the decision making? Um, should it be the search person, if we are talking about the bit management solution? Should it be the, so, the programmatic person, if we talk about um, uh, DSP? Um, or uh, someone from social, if we talk about the platform to manage uh, campaign, campaigns in, in, uh, in Meta? So the, the fact is, everyone wants to be involved. Uh, and if we ask, there will be people from different parts of the organization that want to be involved because they have their own experience. This is actually 
one challenge is that there is a lot of bias. If people have experience with one certain tool, in most cases, what we see is that they will recommend that tool. But the reality is that out there, there are many other tools and some might be more suitable for, for, for the purpose than others. So the way we see it is that you actually need people from different sides of the organization. So I will start with the specialists. The specialists, because these will be the ones that are hands-on, the, the ones that will be running the campaigns, the ones that they can actually challenge the vendors, uh, ask them the right questions about the capabilities, about the features, uh, features of the tool and what it is able to deliver versus their competitions, competitors. Data and IT teams, there should be representatives of those departments because they can validate integration between the systems. If you have a programmatic tool, or if you want to onboard a programmatic solution, imagine a DSP, you want to make sure that data can flow from your CRM or DMP or CDP, and you can activate that data through DSP. So how fast can that data flow is critical and that then you then you did need the support from data and IT teams on the legal and security I think it's quite clear but you need to ensure that there is compliance uh, with the requirements and is really critical that you um, bring them on board from the beginning so you don't uh, get into a, an agreement with uh, what uh, with your preferred vendor and then uh, they don't, do not comply. On the procurement side, usually they are there from the beginning. They lead the project. They ensure that there is transparency. They ensure that there is independence. Because again, like I said before, often there is bias. It's, it's from the human nature. And leadership, you need someone, uh, you not someone, you need a lot of people from uh, senior management to support, to guide, to uh, define what are the, the, the decision criteria as well, but also to uh, enhance adoption if there is one preferred vendor. So imagine if you decide for Trade Desk or uh, DV360 as your DSP, and you're talking about a global organization, how can you ensure that it will be the uh, adopted tool across markets? Because to get the commercial efficiencies and the, and the deliverables. So you need the support from the leadership. So the criteria, I think this is what matters the most to many people um, on how you decide what technology to onboard. It's, it's, it's quite important because you have multiple aspects. You have the footprint, you want, you want uh, the part that to, I wouldn't say have the ground uh, or a foot on the ground in every market, but it's important to have that coverage. Um, it's important to guarantee support, to have the infrastructure. Obviously, cost will become uh, always a factor at some point, uh, and procurement and finance will be able to deal with it. But you want also to have transparency. You want to have full access to the platform. You want to make sure that uh, you, what you see is what you get. And uh, related to the... Um, a lot of what we hear today, you want to ensure that there is privacy and privacy compliance, compliance uh, at different stages. You want sometimes to have a say on the roadmap in terms of how the, the tool develops itself to, to make sure that it goes in line with your expectation. And then we can talk about innovation. We can talk about integrations is a critical aspect, the flexibility in different ways, flexibility in terms of management, but flexibility to move away from this particular partner if it's not fit for purpose any longer. And obviously, if we talk about advertising itself on, uh, up to, uh, on its specifics, Talk about targeting capabilities, cross device, performance, match rates, and what differentiates uh, one solution from the other, right? So these are the multiple factors that should be taken into consideration. So eight questions that you should ask to your vendors. I put here these eight, but could be 30 questions, but these are some of the most critical and for some of the most common. And, um, um, I think it's important for an organization to, apologies, 
to ask these questions before they uh, settle with a, with a partner. First, what integrations? Imagine that you have partners in terms of ad server or reporting tools. You want to have a bid management solution or a DSP or an ad server or a social platform to integrate with, with the current technologies that you have in place. Um, for multiple reasons, for the data to flow, but also to make sure that you can effectively see what are the outcomes. In terms of onboarding, you want to have the training, you want to have support, you want to have the, the um, to be able to know how to change things in the platform and how to access things in the platform. The transparency, we have talked about it, the customization is critical when, for instance, you include um, I'll give you an example. If you have a multi-touch multi attribution tool, you want that data to be incorporated to your DSP. Uh, so you can optimize your campaigns based on that multi-touch attribution outcomes um, rather than just on what the DSP tells you. Uh, the support or roadmap, we tackled it the privacy as well, but these are questions that you surely should ask. The measurement is a critical part, whether it is uh, you just rely on the platform or you have a different reporting uh, dashboard measurement solution, you want to make sure that there is um, real-time um, activation and reporting, uh, or at least close to, to, to real-time. Otherwise, <laughs> what will happen is this. You start onboarding solutions to do everything within the ad tech space or martech space. But because there is preference, there is bias, and everyone thinks that they have um, a, a tool that they need to do to make more effective uh, their day-to-day -day work, you end up with tools that uh, don't fit and uh, don't solve the problem. That is what the technology should be for. So we recommend it to, to start from the basics. As a principle, uh, I think it's critical to start with analytics. I think it should be the first solution. It's the starting point. Uh, start by analyzing the traffic, just capturing the, the what are the different touch points, where the users come from, what do they do on your website or your app, um, and try to identify the patterns, who are those, the, those audiences. And then you go from the ad server. And ad service is, is very, very critical because ad server can be used in different ways. One is to connect to you with your DSP, your uh, search tool, with your uh, social tool, but also if you think about direct buys, if you think about uh, trafficking uh, assets for display campaigns, ad server is your go-to technology tech tool. It can control everything. You can run an A-B test and it can help you really identify what works and what doesn't work. And only afterwards, I think we should recommend, you should go for the technology that can in drive you or can take you, your activation to the next level. Uh, give you a few examples of the DSP, the bid management, and the Facebook marketing platform or uh, FMP. So, DSPs, we talk about the likes of Trade Desk, Amobi, uh, DV360, Adform, uh, and so many others. Bid management, talk about Search 360, Sky, uh, and Marine Software, and uh, on the FMP, uh, there are examples of Smartly, Sky, Marine as well, and, and a few others. But all these platforms, what we'll do is bring automation and make it more efficient. But you need to have the expertise to handle it. And then only the next stage is where you start trying to drive the scale uh, to, to increase the reach and look for new audiences and um, bring more sophistication to the business. Uh, and that's when you look into tech partners, but also data partners to, to, to drive that. Um, one challenge that happens often 
and this is why you, we think that you should start with the basics, is that when you want to board multiple solutions uh, for measurement, for tool activation, then everyone starts looking at different things and no one understands the outcome. Because um, you work in silos, because uh, you have different departments, because you have different tools. So it's something that should be avoided. So just to, to, to summarize, um, we believe that technology is here to stay despite the headwinds. We saw the bad things, we saw the good things. Some examples where companies uh, went for layoffs uh, uh, or bankrupt, but there were others that were acquired, many others were acquired, many others are, are growing. So it's about identifying the opportunities. But again, disruption will always lead to many opportunities and there will be new technologies emerging. Um, one thing to have in mind is that tech should solve problems and enhance opportunities. Again, to my point before, MarTech and AdTech should uh, work hand in hand and the crossover is just growing, just increasing and the more they are interconnected, the further efficiency that you will have. And the reality is um, you can see it multiple reports, the ones that identified here from CMOs, but not only leaders recognize the value of the technology in taking them to the next uh, level, but also in taking uh, understanding more about the audiences and uh, and reaching uh, out to them in different ways. Now, um, the other point was new media and tech require different skill sets. So it's not like it was. Now there is a much more fragmented ecosystem, much more uh, diverse um, um, and very different one from another. All these also are in different environments and you need to have that expertise, that T-shaped talent to actually be able to plan and target and optimize uh, taking into account the, this different ecosystem. Um, and to finalize, when selecting a partner, that, is, that this is what it is about, uh, we need to make realize that this is a business commitment and not a department or silo departed commitment. So it's important to bring relevant stakeholders to get their perspective so you account for dependencies and with four external factors that probably we didn't consider before. And then I think it's important to start from the basics. If there is no point in going just for a DSP or an attribution tool if you don't have a proper analytic solution or an ad server. Start with the basics and move from there. So this is uh, the presentation. I hope uh, he clarified and I hope it was helpful. And Reach out to me, please, if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you so much. So interesting. I didn't know this difference between ad tech and math tech. And I feel that many people in the audience probably benefit from getting a bit more clear on the ad tech, which tech to use, how to go about it, and also how it affects the different areas in their business. So thank you so much. Where can people reach you if they have questions as they're watching the replay? What's the best way to get in touch with you? I think uh, at MediaSense, MediaSense.com, the website, but also uh, my email uh, is all right. I think it's, it's in, the, in the first slide of the presentation as well. Um, I think, yeah, on LinkedIn as well, Leonardo Oliveira. Perfect. So multiple Perfect. ways to reach out to me. So many ways if people have questions. Uh, and one question is, what do you feel is one of the small changes that makes a big difference? So what do you feel is something that it's like a small tweak that people don't think about and that actually makes a huge difference? In terms of uh, selecting the tech stack, I mean, uh, I wouldn't say it is minor, but uh, I think to my point earlier is getting different perspectives. Uh, because we usually have, it's, it's human nature is having a bias, is having a, an understanding or having experience with one certain tool or heard about something uh, that works. But what works for one might not work for another. Uh, 
and what works for an organization what worked for me when in my past experience in that single separate company might not work nowadays so it's getting different perspectives and if you are able to to challenge the partners and effectively test it go for it i think that's good advice for life <laughs> not just for tech exactly. always looking at things from different perspectives trying on different hats there's a book uh, by Edouard de Bono on uh, different ways of thinking and you try on like the red hat, the green hat, the black hat, that's a judgment and you see things through yeah. different hats and different lenses. So it's very similar to what you're talking about. Okay, I have to say there were a couple of slides where I had um, uh, animation that I wasn't able to show. One was actually the Artec and Martech um, and um, the other one was on the the MarTech and then go into the search tech. So on that ad tech and MarTech, it's quite interesting because it's how you have the different technology on that tech side, on the MarTech side, and how they are they come up together. And mm. on the, the MarTech is that to showcase that search part or the digital part is technology activation is just a tiny bit of the whole the whole thing. So Okay. If if someone wants to, to have a look, uh, uh, feel free to ask and I can share the presentation. Amazing, amazing. Thank you so much for being here today. This was the last talk for today in the Search World Track. Thank you so much for all of you who joined, for all of you who are watching this in the replay. Hope you enjoyed too. Feel free to contact uh, Leonardo if you have any questions or wants to see the slides again and wants a copy of them. And feel free also to connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm Katie Stoddart. Been a pleasure to be your host today. Thank you so much, Leonardo, for finishing today uh, in the Search World track. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. This is all we got. Remember the revolution in our minds. This is all we got. Lock me out of this life institution I am angry and I am illusions Yes, I hate but it's not a solution Try my best buddy, I'm just a human Oh, 